we're just going to go and look at the second matchup. And for that, I'll quickly pull up the schedule again. And the second matchup we'll look at is going to be the second matchup, obviously, that was released, which was the Serial Killers, uh, the team of Liam Pai against the Manual Laborers, the team of In the Manual. And that was another matchup that for a long time, actually, that was the case for all the three matchups, a matchup that for a long time looked really close. Um, and it's always interesting to see the teams of Liam Pai or Liam, uh, I will call him here, uh, start in or have their start in head to head because he has been a multiple time head to head winning captain or he is a multiple time head to head winning captain. He knows this contest. He is so excited for this contest every time. And he is uh, a community admin too. Uh, and it's always yeah, really interesting to see what his teams come up with because he's been there. And I will quickly bring back the logos for this. So we have the serial killers against the manual laborers. And the two parks in this matchup were, whoops, accidentally killing my setup here with a misclick. Okay, I was able to save it. Okay, so, but because of this, you're now seeing uh, the park or the logo for the park by the manual laborers. Uh, Gauntel Grim first. Um, actually spelled differently here than in the download. That's something I wasn't 100% sure about. Maybe they weren't sure about the the name either. But um, Gauntel Grimm against La Tomatina. And this is not so much a logo as it is, or maybe it is the logo, but it is uh, yeah, a tomato juice pack or... I don't, I don't know how you call this in English. It's like foldable and you have like a box uh, that you can find either the cereals or the tomato juice in. I don't know, probably the cereals. Actually, I'm, I'm not sure. Both would be fine and it has all the information. It's a cereal box, okay. Cereal box and the juice comes uh, from elsewhere. And obviously, yeah, the pun is the, the cereal killers being the team name. Um... And yeah, it's very creative, already a great introduction to the map, uh, differently to the other three parks we saw so far that just had logos. This has a little of background on their, yeah, logo image, so to say. Um, and La Tomatina, uh, it needs to be explained, is a tomato, toma tomato fight festival in uh, the Spanish city of... Liam, quickly, please help me with the name again. Uh, Buñal? Buñol? I don't, I don't know right now. You'd use gazpacho instead of milk. Okay. Serving suggestion for the tomato cereal. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, I think it's the Spanish city of Buñol. Yes, Kati agrees. Buñol. Uh, and it's actually a real thing. Um, they meet every year, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, to have a huge tomato throwing fight like a snowball fight in, in the city center people just uh covered in tomatoes and it's it's yeah a pretty interesting event and it's never been depicted in rct so this is a really interesting park in that sense as it is showing an event instead of just uh yeah a creative background and um I'll quickly open this and we'll start with La Tomatina by the Serial Killers. Where is it? RCT2. And here is the park. And of course, the music needs to stop. Sorry for that. Here's the park, La Tomatina by the Serial Killers. And 
thankfully we didn't miss the opening scene uh, because it was still in pause um, but we already see the red wooden coaster or the green train of the red wooden, uh, wooden coaster fizzing through the village the nutrition facts were hilarious on the on the box and that's absolutely true uh, I would have perhaps tried to read some of them but it's actually so small on my <laughs> on my Streamlabs screen that I can't read any of it right now. Um, but yeah, so what do we have here? The Spanish city of Buñol depicted in, I would say, a pretty realistic setting. I would say the, the entire map is supposed to be realistic aside of the fact that, well, maybe maybe this freefall tower here is a bit out of the box, but aside of that, obviously, the huge red wooden roller coaster that is just weaving through these houses uh, and going all around the city uh, is a bit of a fantasy element starting in one of the one of the yeah, farm villas around the town. And the way it's depicted here, uh, red brick Spanish... Uh, theme red brick town not necessarily what you'd find in the real city of Buñol like that but instead taking inspiration from others other, uh, other towns or cities uh, across Spain and all around it you have these very well executed tomato fields you have a truck bringing the tomatoes from some of the farms into the town you see it coming back with the tr tomatoes delivered and the tomato de delivery going all the way to this information spot here where there's crates full of tomato or crates with tomatoes even stacked on top of them and it's a really cool depiction uh, of the process of bringing even more tomatoes into the town for what is obviously the centerpiece or obviously the main idea of the map uh, the tomato festival with everyone throwing tomatoes at each other the whole town being covered in red by all the tomatoes, the buildings being covered in red. Uh, I guess they put up some tomato shields here with these blue walls that are also sprinkled in red um, to save some of their buildings. Other buildings they didn't care about saving anymore, I guess, because they were already red. I don't know. Um, but yeah, city center fully covered in tomatoes. It's a really fun concept, concept really fun idea. Um, and we have the flag of the community of Valencia, uh, which is the region where this is based in. And yeah, I, I would say overall, it's really easy to experience this park because it's, it's kind of probably the best park so far, or on, I think on the same level as, um, the good death in terms of knowing where the centerpiece is because obviously you have the the main square here for the city uh, or for the town where everything is going on you have the outskirts that are farming area um, I think drowned of course it was a bit more or a bit tougher to depict depict it with like a real centerpiece square because obviously it was just supposed to be little islands but here uh, it's really used well and it shows that the players building this, Liam and Eve, have a good understanding of, uh, yeah, of historic towns or city planning, so to say, because they are focusing the denser architecture around the uh, town square. And then it kind of fades out towards the edge of the town and it has the historic um, aqueduct here on the side of the town and yeah a very interesting spot to enter the city here under that um, a couple of a couple of streets where you can enter the city and then here another newer square I would say and then one road or street that even leads up the hill uh, to some of the yeah newer town structures uh, not as much about red brick anymore but instead a bit newer and it looks very different uh, because of that from the rest of the buildings on the map um, which is a nice switch but I think because of it's so on the edge of the map and because of the elevation changes that come in as well 
it's definitely a bold thing to attempt to say okay here's where the new part of the town starts this is all the old part of the town uh especially because i think it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as noticeably something to think about while looking at the map if and that's subjective opinion once again if in my opinion the red brick was fully working out i think one thing that i will say about the red brick while it is typically spanish is that additionally to the red tomatoes it it seems very warm of course the atmosphere seems very warm you have the more tomatoes on the outside but i i just wish i just wish with all the red coming in and all the red being of course such a yeah, strong contrast, or supposedly such a strong contrast to the rest of the town. I don't think it was necessarily needed for, like, a canvas that you want to splatter in red to have the canvas be a shade of red as well. I think it's perhaps a bigger statement if the canvas isn't all red beforehand anyway. And then I think just, while this is traditional and nice in that sense, I think this here with a bit more variation in color and shape it already makes it feel a bit more lively while this feels a bit more like a yeah like i don't know scenery or like a like a museum so to say it feels like the streets are obviously full of life but the towns i wish there were a couple of people just standing on the balcony or something because the uh, the townhouses here, the brick houses, just aren't as lively as the c more colorful ones are, simply because they spring out at you much more, and it's something that I think they should have worked on, that they, or that maybe is just something that I'm personally experiencing with it, uh, but I think that maybe had they had more time, uh, that might have been something that they would have tried to improve, making these houses feel a bit more lively, more scenes like this where there's people actually outside of the main square uh, next to one of the houses uh, but yeah I think I wish I wish the town or the decision for the town while I think it's a good I or I think it's executed well I think the idea uh, isn't 100% my taste to go with the red backdrop even though I understand where it comes from um, and then obviously around the map again the farm uh the tomato farms very beautifully depicted i really like the object usage uh, i like the wooden fences like the textures here uh the elevation change is super nice too some of the old city wall here is depicted really well um then there's a little supportive ride here part of the whole event uh with these cars basically getting a car wash from all the tomatoes um, again chose to make the cars red again maybe not necessarily needed because then it doesn't if they're already red before then maybe you don't need to wash off the tomatoes but that's just something that is the same that I also felt about these buildings as I said uh, overall though the city life again depicted super well I really like the scene here with the restrooms uh, the medical tent, really nice. There's a little car here next to it, a custom vehicle. Um, and then, yeah, uh, the Villa Gaspacho. Lots of Gaspacho stuff in the town. All these little, uh, I don't know, there's more places selling stuff here. Nice little signs on those places. Gaspacho being sold here. Monsanto, the company, I don't know if they have rights to some of this farmland i don't know um or if they're just giving like some of the dung for the tomato tomatoes i don't know genetically manipulated uh tomatoes not sure uh, overall nice scene here under under the aqueduct for the first drop um and then it yeah, loops around this villa very nicely as well. Overall, um, something also a lot of people mentioned. Really bold choice with the red coaster, but I think that 
is conceptually uh, strong and also a really nice gesture and it just talks to you about how the whole whole town is covered in red during this festival and something I really enjoyed too were like over here were just these little bridges in the back leading to some of the houses um, and yeah I think overall the town is constructed beautifully uh, some of the aesthetic choices with the red brick buildings I wish the concept for it would have been different but the execution is very very well done um, and then obviously I haven't talked about the church in the center of the of the town yet uh, very nice looking Spanish church um, I get some of the complaints about this tower roof here because it just doesn't feel as organic as the other one and as the structure in the center but overall very believable church very believable town uh, yeah definitely an interesting park and one to like and I'd say uh, let's look at the park that it came up against which is uh, the park by the manual laborers which is Gauntle Grimm and I'll quickly pause this and go back whoops that was the score of the first match again um, I'll quickly go back in here and I'll load Gauntle Grimm of course I really have to watch out that I'll never show you the loading screen otherwise you'll be spoiled all parks of my team now I made sure I made sure to hide all of them in uh, in folders all the ones that I downloaded and looked at all right so we're looking at the second park in this matchup and it is Gauntel Grimm by the manual laborers and let's go back to RCT and this is the starting scene of the park of the map and it's a very different aesthetic after seeing all that red seeing so much blue black and brown is just such a contrast and I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about the contrast because it's just it feels like a different game all of a sudden because it's not all red and instead this is all black and brown with like the blue water mixed in what do we have here Gauntel Grimm supposed to be the fantasy name for a Dwarven Mine water park. Um, I forgot to mention at the start you saw a little message here. They actually had to do this a couple of times while saving it seems. When dwarves struck an underground spring deep in their mine they decided to have some fun. Welcome to Gauntel Grimm. So, welcome to Gauntel Grimm indeed. Um, this scene right here I will say right away it's a great opening for this map uh, what you have here is basically the inside of a huge dwarven cave that they decided to not put like a rock a uh, solid rock over that you would have to then unhide by uh, yeah the I forgot what the tool is called I actually it's all in German I can't even tell you what it's called in English but yeah uh, they decided to show show it without the roof without the uh, rock over it or the mountain over it and you're just seeing basically the inside of their mine without a roof and here you're seeing the entrance to the dwarven mine and it has a big Lord of the Rings feeling to it um, in my opinion big Lord of the Rings feeling Mines of Moria instantly come to mind um, and it's a very nice entrance see, uh, scene, especially with the water coming down, the mix of blue and gray against some of the foliage, um, the very large pillars, uh, some of the detailing on those pillars, really nice, and it definitely reads like it's some form of fantastical dwarven shapes and details on there, um, and then you have all these yeah, gift shop related stores I think uh, shields swords I would suggest these are or think these are um, yeah merchants it says 
and even blue flames. So a fantasy water park in a dwarven mine, definitely a really cool idea. And when you get inside the mountain, you also have a great scene coming or looking at the entrance from the inside. Uh, it's a huge gesture with the stairs here on both sides, the blue flames, the round, round wall here in front of those stairs, uh, even some animated path objects here. And yeah, overall, just a really nice entrance, then also some pillars in darker colors, uh, and instantly a switch from all the water as well to some lava also, uh, that is, yeah, coming out of the rocks here, um, as part of this huge, I don't know, digging, digging ride, I'm not sure, uh, the chain definitely adds a lot here it's a really cool ride idea uh, really nice with the lava but let's not get carried away before we talk about individual rides overall it's not normal theme park obviously it is a water park and overall one thing that i instantly am wondering about well one of the first things you get to is this topspin attraction here the custom topspin is while it is a water park and it has a lot of slides is there actually a pool that is supposed to be like an open pool for people who don't want to slide for like yeah i don't know people that just want to swim or like a wave pool or something like that uh that's actually a question for the chat as well maybe and i think there isn't and i think that's definitely something that they should have done maybe i'm just blind and i'm not seeing it but i think all these pools uh, are kind of pools where slides are running into and I don't know I've, I've just never seen a water park that doesn't have a normal pool and that's definitely something that I found a bit weird uh, as someone else mentioned it to me I didn't actually realize it myself um, but yeah overall overall generally though some of these slides are integrated super well into the rocks um, it seems like the rock work is basically just on the outside uh, or connected to the ceiling just on the outside uh, because some of these rocks end quite early in the center here might be supposed to look like they are actually connected to the ceiling though uh, kind of tough to say but then you have slides coming down from some of the taller rocks you have again these stone pillar uh, structures being used all over the place in order to show where uh, the dwarves build path into those mines very well done again really interesting shapes again following the motive and the theme from the entrance um, and you see this all over and then of course you have lots of different versions or variations of slides you have one with a huge bowl here that then goes into this pool. You have a steep one with a with a turn and with a section where you actually go backwards. Uh, and some really nice hacks too, beca hacks too, because this ride actually ends backwards and I'm not actually sure how easy it is to do that. I just assumed that, uh, assumed that when you reach a second station which is right here for this slide as it seems to be broken uh, bad timing for us I guess quickly fix it um, so it seems still no peeps running I don't know it seems like this slide actually goes into the second station while being backwards and I'm not sure how easy that is to do actually and it definitely took me by surprise um, and then on the other side here, you have this lazy river uh, circling the central uh, slide structure. And then the further you get to get towards the back, more slides, uh, but also the main roller coaster or the singular roller coaster, Crystallis, or Crystallis, uh, themed or named after some of the crystals found in this cave. And I think this coaster, for me, even though the red wooden coaster in um, La Tomatina is a very nice coaster, I think this coaster, 
for me is the best coaster in the matchup because the layout and the integration here, the interaction with some of the surrounding structures is just top notch. The interaction for the wooden coaster in La Tomatina uh, was also great, but I think it's much easier to find this as like a main scene set piece. Um, and I think it just by a little bit beats out the scene with the uh, aqueduct uh, in La Tomatina for me. And I think this is on the inside of the cape, I think this is my favorite angle here with this uh, this dwarf structure again uh, having two slides coming down one encircling the other and then a very steep drop for both of them uh, I really really like this uh, fallen or collapsed pillar um, then some mine vehicles here some more gift shop stuff um, yeah just really beautiful integration with the waterfalls also and wooden steps leading up to show some more of the mine mining that used to go on here uh, before they turned it into a water park and then also this set of or this path leading up here to these two slides is beautifully crafted definitely i think my favorite uh bit of path on the map um and yeah it just generally seems like this area got a whole lot of attention as it is so picture like so beautifully laid out as well very picturesque uh, whereas overall I felt like the inside of the water park in general could have used just a couple more days uh, of work on it I think maybe they ran it a bit close with the deadline in the end um, because some some areas have nice details like this like this stone statue of a strong dwarf actually really nice detailing here texturing uh lifting up weights weight lifting dwarf statue uh really interesting um but then this corner for example just doesn't feel like there's much going on in it at all and also not much fo in terms of foliage on these rocks here um which I guess is something that's true for most of this. They actually decided to not add too much foliage on the inside of the cave. Um, but yeah, just just felt to me like they could have taken a couple or used a couple more days to yeah clean up some of the rough edges. For example, hide the coaster stations here if that was even intended. Maybe it was actually intended so the stations are still there. Um, and yeah, overall, perhaps, uh, or scenes like this with the bridge, I would generally always appreciate a more, yeah, firmly constructed custom bridge over just the normal path uh, usage. Um, but yeah, overall, definitely very well crafted park as well. Really nice here. Uh, some of the backdrops with the with the stone walls next to the rocks. A lot of people said that the rocks were too much for them. For me personally, uh, I think the usage of the rocks was actually very nice. Uh, it's true that the art style of the two different sets of rocks being used here doesn't necessarily match up perfectly, but I think they actually did it quite well for how tough it is to use so much of these rocks while also deciding conceptually to not add that much foliage uh, inside the cave. So I think overall they did that quite well. Um, but yeah, I, for me, for me personally, the park just didn't feel like it had as much content to it as La Tomatina did, while the map honestly feels a lot bigger somehow. Uh, like the the whole structure looks huge because it's not not round they were able to make it just elongated by making some of these uh, sides a bit slimmer but while it looks very big it just feels like they could have used more time and uh, on the other hand La Tomatina has a very neat concept too and it's just it definitely looks done and it definitely looks like it has attention to detail 
uh, everywhere. And yeah, overall though, really nice matchup. And I think, again, uh, it was pretty close for a long time. And I would say, maybe before I leave this map, my favorites were definitely this coaster. Uh, definitely a big fan of the top spin and the integration of the lava as well. Um, there were some cutout scenes here in the back also. Uh, this also a very nice scene here for the coaster. And then also this being some kind of treasure chest cave maybe, I'm not really sure. Storage carts. Yeah, so basically a storage cave and then a huge dining hall. Again, really reminds you of that scene from uh, Lord of the Rings. Um, with the empty hall. But yeah. Then generally, of course, the entrance was really nice. I just wish that this bottom set of stairs, uh, it like the whole layout here, the top layout is really beautiful. I just wish this last set of stairs would have maybe been diagonally connected to to this level here because the the uh, zigzag right after these these gates just feels a bit too grid like for me uh too much like old school rct overall very nice though and i would suggest uh give me a second while i pull up the score for this i have to go into the right match and it is serial killers versus manual laborers Here's the score, and I'll put it on. And there it is. Actually, the crop there <laughs> was a perfect fit almost. I'm quite happy that that, that worked out well. So the serial killers won in the end, um, and the vote in the end was, okay, just five votes different, so still quite close. It seemed at a point, I think, that the serial killers were pulling away a bit, but overall, um serial killers yeah just barely edging out uh barely edging out the manual laborers who maybe could have gotten a bit closer had they had just a little bit more time and we see Liam and uh, some of the manual laborers perhaps talking in the chat about about what could have been but yeah i think Liam's team definitely uh yeah, just knowing that they have to deliver in the first round, knowing that they have to get done, and uh, yeah, their park just felt complete. It felt full of life, and I think that's what got them the win in the end, while also being a pretty cute idea, of course.